So far, we went over the animation twice and polished it a little bit each time. First focusing on bigger problems, then on finer ones. And you can keep repeating this process as many times as you want. The more time you spend polishing your animation, the better it will look. So let's give it another watch. And I'm sure there are many things that we can fix, but personally there is something that bothers me about the landing. Notice how the character is bending her knees before she even lands, whereas in the reference we have straight legs until the actual landing, and then the knees only bend when the person hits the ground. So let's try to recreate this. I'm going to select all of my FK leg widgets and let's see. I'll try to extend the legs at this frame. So I'll press Shift E for the breakdown tool. And actually, let's cancel and go one or two frames back and try to extend the legs again. Maybe here. Yeah, it looks just right. So here we have the legs almost completely straight for the entire fall. And the character starts bending the legs as she lands. Okay, that's good. Um, the landing is a little bit off. From this pose, I know that the toes need to be around here when she lands. And that is more or less what happens, but in between we have some weirdness. So let's try to fix it. It's just two frames, and normally you should avoid animating frame by frame as much as possible, but here I think it may work out. I have to pull this leg back a little bit and rotate the foot. And then on the next keyframe, let's rotate the foot again. Maybe the toes slightly as well. And then I have to return the toes to their original position. Even though we animated frame by frame, I think this looks kind of smooth and natural. Okay, this will work. Um, here I'm noticing that the arms are quite different between the reference and my pose. So let's add an additional arm pose here. I'm going to change it a little bit because the timing didn't look quite right. So yeah, you can keep repeating this process each time finding little problems in your motion and fixing them. But I'm going to move forward with uh, two special polishing passes. In the first one, we are going to break the symmetry and then we'll implement another basic animation principle called overlapping action. So let's move on to the asymmetry pass. This process will be simple to do, but it will have a big impact on the quality of the animation. I think it's obvious why we want to do this. Pure symmetry appears odd and robotic. By breaking the symmetry, the action will look more natural. In this case, we'll have to be very subtle, because this is a strong movement performed by a good athlete. And symmetry can convey strength and skill. If you are animating the same action performed by a clumsy person, the asymmetry would be more pronounced. Which sounds like a fun exercise, if you give it a try, show me the results. So, I'm going to enable my overlays and disable X symmetry. And first I'm going to focus on the FK actions because they are a little bit uh, easier to do. So let's go through the animation. 
here we have the first pose and we want to make it a little bit uh, asymmetrical for the arms. And I'm going to give this arm a slight random offset and same with the forearm. And I can even tweak the hand a little bit if I wanted to. I could do the same with the other arm, just very subtly. And here where the character drops the bar, I can focus on the eye gate controls. So I could take one of them and move it just slightly to the side and maybe I'll uh, change the elbow position just a little bit. And then for the rest of the action, the hands will stay on the bar, not moving much, and I'll focus on the elbows, just changing the pose slightly. And here we are in FK mode again, so let's focus on the FK controls. I'm going to move this arm a little bit higher. Then on this frame, create some asymmetry. And then maybe at the last keyframe, a little bit of an asymmetry. Okay, and I think that will do it. Okay, next we'll focus on the legs and I think that will have more impact on the animation. So this is the frame where the character leaves the ground and, and the legs are completely symmetrical. So let's um, change the IK controls just a little bit. I'll move this one slightly back and maybe rotate it very, very slightly. And then I'll snap my FK controls again. Okay, this is slight symmetry. Then we'll keep moving. And on each keyframe, I'm going to offset some of the leg controls a little bit. So here again, the IK controls are completely symmetrical, so let's focus on them. And snap the FK controls. Here I can see some nice asymmetry in the uh, reference, so let's try to emulate it. I'll focus again on the arms. Yeah, that's nice. And here we will have to fix these frame-by-frame -frame animation that we created for the landing. And that's more or less it. Um, you can do another pass for the body, for example. Making it move slightly left and right, or rotating the pelvis slightly throughout the frames. And let's see how this looks. Okay, the movement is no longer perfectly symmetrical, so let's move on. Next, I'll try to apply some overlapping action to this motion. Follow through and overlapping action is one of the principles of animation. 
And this principle is usually associated with uh, stuff like clothing or tails, you know, stuff that kind of drags behind the main movement of the character without much intention of its own. But it can also be applied to the parts of the character itself. So generally speaking, the trunk of the body is the center of mass and it leads the action and the limbs follow it. So if we just offset, if we delay the movement of the limbs a little bit after the body, that will create this uh, overlapping action effect. And this will be especially pronounced in the legs while the character swings. Uh, so let's focus on that. I'm going to select all of the leg widgets, the FK ones. And let's hide the IK actually to make it easier to see. I'll select the feet as well. And here, I'm going to leave this pose alone because this is where the uh, transition between IK and FK happens. I want to keep it simple here, but let's move on to the next pose. And what we can do is just take these keyframes that we have on this uh, key pose and move them one or two frames back. And then I'm going to deselect the upper legs and I'm going to move the keyframes again to frames uh, forward in time. And then I'll only keep the feet selected and actually they don't have a keyframe here. So I guess I could, could create one and move it forward. And so now we get this subtle effect of the legs dragging behind the torso a little bit. And for this um, period of time, we can kind of do this in one go. So let's select all of the leg widgets, select all of these keyframes and move them forward two frames. Then deselect the upper legs, move two frames forward and deselect the upper legs two frames forward. So it's not something that will be super obvious, but when you get to these polishing passes, things usually get uh, more and more subtle. If you want to, you can experiment with making this effect more uh, exaggerated by offsetting the keyframes more. Let's focus on the arms now. I think offsetting the keyframes after she releases the bar will create a nice follow through effect. So let's select all of these keyframes, move them two or three frames back, deselect the upper arms and move the keyframes some more and then the hands and move some more. And I'm going to leave it at that because at some point the process just becomes too messy and it can be presented as a structured tutorial. You just go ahead, notice problems, fix them, or you fail to fix them, you create a mess and then you have to undo the changes and try again.